Moore. Um, first of all, my first question is who bribed Hunter Biden to be here today? That's my first question. Um, second question, you are the epitome of white privilege, coming into the Oversight Committee, spitting in our face, ignoring a congressional subpoena to be deposed. What are you afraid of? You have no balls to come up here and- M Mr. Chairman, point of inquiry. Mr. Chairman, um, if the, the lady recognized if, 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 if the gentle lady Christ wants to hear from Hunter Biden, we can hear from him right now, Mr. And Chairman. Let's take a vote Christ and hear from I'm Hunter speaking. Biden. What are, are you afraid of? Hold on, hold on, of? hold on, hold on. Order, are order, order. Are women allowed to, are women allowed to speak in here or no? Are women allowed to speak in here or no? Because you keep interrupting me. I, I'll interrupt the you chairman. Keep interrupting. I don't know that he's a lady. I think that that Hunter Biden should be arrested right here, right now, and go straight to jail. Our nation is founded on the rule of come law. Come on, come on. And the premise come that on. the law applies to equally to everyone, no matter what your last Point name Point of order, is. Mr. Chairman. Point um, of it order. It doesn't matter who you are. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Biggs over Donald here. Donald Trump Jr. Biggs over here. Uh, state your point, Mr. Biggs. Yeah, my, my point of order is this. Are we going to continue on with, with this blatant interruption? It, this, this is absurd and inappropriate. I intend to give my statement. I don't intend to have anybody interrupt uh, I'm not going to interrupt your statements. I think you should have decorum and courtesy and don't act like a bunch of nimrods. You just interrupted a woman. And, and that's five. You know, I got, I got we, permission. Can we I agree? Did, Everyone Mr. has Mr. five Chairman, minutes. Can we agree? Point, point of order again. The assertion that I interrupted was absolutely false. That's typical of the gentleman who spoke it. I got permission to speak from the chairman. I spoke. I was interrupted yet again right. by the gentleman who doesn't choose to go through the chair and follow proper order. I encourage us, I, I, I think if we're going to have any respect at all, we need to have proper decorum. Well, you're well said. Okay, all right. So we love the Constitution today. And we also want to talk about foreign money coming in. Have y'all seen the report that was just produced where this chairman decided that he was going to block this committee from receiving additional information about y'all's guy, Trump, and all the money that he took? From what we did receive, we know that Trump got almost $6 million that we can account for, and we know that, that's more, that there's more there. From China specifically, we found almost $8 million total that he accepted from foreign governments while he was serving as the president of these United States. But we're concerned about the president's son, the president's son who has not been involved in his administration. I just want to run it back, though, to the very beginning because this is something that I just can't get over. I can't get over the gentle lady from South Carolina talking about white privilege. It was a spit in the face, at least of mine as a black woman, for you to talk about what white privilege looks like, especially from that side of the aisle. And let me quote your now ousted speaker and what he had to say about the Republican Party and y'all's lack of diversity. When you look at the Democrats, they actually look like America. When I look at my party, we look like the most restrictive country club in America. So let me tell you something. Y'all don't know what white privilege looks like, but I'm gonna I'm show you a little bit of something. You see, you want to talk about a two-tier justice system, and this is the only time that y'all have ever referenced it when this country has a history when it comes to black and brown folk of having two separate sets of rules. And right now what you want to do is have two separate sets of rules because Mr. Moskowitz offered y'all a fair situation. He said he would vote for Hunter to be held in contempt if y'all voted to hold all, even if you remove all of the members of Congress, there's still other people that y'all haven't decided that y'all have excuses for, but y'all don't want to hold them in contempt. But for some reason, it makes sense to hold Hunter Biden in contempt, who has tried to comply. And let me tell you why nobody wants to talk to y'all behind closed doors, because y'all lie. That's just the bottom line. You have done it thus far in this investigation. You have done it this far as it relates to this committee. In every single hearing, y'all spin, spin, spin. I don't know how y'all are still standing right now because you should be quite dizzy from all the spinning that you're constantly doing when it comes to spinning the truth. You talk about free and fair elections, but you back a guy who we know tried to steal the election. And this isn't about what Democrats have to say. Let me remind you, for those of you that don't know how the justice system works, it's not a matter of the president went in and indicted Trump, but we are 
we're talking about grand juries. Grand juries are comprised of American citizens and the people that have entered pleas of guilty that will be flipping on your leader in a minute, they are Republicans. I do want to point that out. And half of them were Republicans that were handpicked by Donald Trump himself. So to be clear, whatever happens to your little leader, it's going to be because of the actions that he took. So you can talk all you want to about how January 6th was nonsense, but all of y'all were running at that time. Y'all were grabbing y'all's gas masks and y'all were running to your offices because you didn't know if they were coming to kill you. You should have cared that somebody was there to protect you, but instead you want to play games because you found out that it was your leader that decided that he wanted to propagate an insurrection on our country. So don't tell me that you care about the Constitution, because you don't. All you care about is Trump getting reelected, and I'll yield the last of my time to my leader. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just to address briefly, um, quickly, that, that moment about uh, privilege and, and all of this that we're seeing here. Uh, it was a very beautiful speech uh, by the gentlelady um, who, as she mentioned, was uh, helped lead on the majority, the now majority side, uh, the Civil Rights and Civil Liberties Subcommittee, but I think it's so exemplary of the point that she also oversaw the elimination of the Civil Rights Subcommittee on this committee, which really kind of gives the whole game away. We show up, we give speeches, we give flowery words, but at the end of the day, participate in the structural erosion of the rights and representation of people uh, that, that are marginalized, women, people of color, people that just need to see their due process and civil liberties protected in this country. But I will move on. As also the Republican side had mentioned in their many uh, raisings of the January 6th committee, that it's not just Hunter Biden, you, me, any individual subject uh, to, to equal treatment under the law, to be held up to accountability under the law, but it is also these committees and this committee that is subject to oversight and law. We must comply with the law here as well. Now, I may be one of the very few people that actually believes in Congress, you know, in this country, but I do, and many of us do here. And we have an obligation to engage in good faith participation to execute and comply with the subpoena. The chairman said in front of the country several times to Hunter Biden, you can show up here in front of the world, in front of the public. Hunter Biden took him up on that offer. He said, I will show up in public. I will show up in public. He showed up here today. He showed up here in the past. And Mr. Chairman, I know you do your best with what you've got, but you've got members here that have submitted falsified evidence to the record. You have members here that have submitted and mischaracterized closed door hearings. And people want to say back and forth at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what party it's happened from. You've got members who've engaged in revenge porn in this committee. So it is understandable why Hunter Biden would want to testify in front of the public for the American people to be able to witness that testimony uh, it, uh, for themselves. You've got members who've defied subpoenas. You've got members who we are um, one year into the term asking what the rules are at the beginning of the committee. The book was given to us on day one. And so what we should do is allow the man to testify. I believe in the power of the Oversight Committee. Frankly, I believe in it regardless of whether Republicans or Democrats have the chair, because I believe that this committee should have the power of oversight. And we cannot do that on a partisan basis. And so for that, I implore this committee to allow Hunter Biden to testify publicly. I implore and I ask for that to happen. And we cannot do that by getting engaged in this back and forth on a, on a defiance of the subpoena. Let him comply. Let him do it today. Let him do it tomorrow. But let the man do it. And with that, I yield back to the ranking member. Thank you, Ms. Ocasio-Cortez.